The following presentation is a First Baptist Church of Glenarden International production.
morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are tuning in from. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Happy Sunday, family. I'm one of your co-hosts this morning, Tam Cease, proud member here at the First Baptist Church of Glen Arden International. Listen, if this is your first time hanging out with us, drop a one in the chat so our chat host can welcome you. And listen, no matter where you are tuning in from, drop in the chat and tell us where you are watching from, whether it is Brooklyn or Botswana, New Mexico or New Zealand, tell us where you are tuning in from. And family, you know the drill. Listen, share this link. Share this link with anyone that you know needs to hear a word from God today. So family, as I said, I'm not by myself. I'm with my cutie on duty. Hey, lady. Hello, Tamara. How, How are, are you? you so good to see you. I like this number. Oh, thank you. Oh, this little number. I'm I thought trying. I'd be a little grace girly today. Oh, see all the sparkle in the Listen, bling. Listen, yes, I'm giving him a grace yes. girl grace. Yes. <laughs> Family, I'm so happy that we're together. Yes. Love us so much. Well, listen, family, listen. If you happened to miss last week, Pastor gave us a word like none other. And if you missed it, have no fear. The Run It Back is here. Let's check it out. Come on, let's sing it together, everybody. I want to see you. It's an easy petition we lift to the Lord. Say it again, say it again. I'm blessed when I get up. I bless when I go in. I bless when I come out. That's the kind of life I'm living. I'm, I'm blessed because God is answering my prayers even before I ask him. Y'all don't understand what I'm saying. He's working miracles out. He's fixing stuff that by the time I get to, it may not be there now, but by the time I get to where I'm going, he's already provided what I stand in need of. That's the kind of life I like living. That a God that knows what I need even before I ask him. That's what I like about that kind of a God. I love this kind of life that I'm living because I see God fighting my battles. I see him answering my prayers. His word gives me life. I can't wait to get up every day to see what he's going to work out. I can't wait to face my days to see how he's going to solve my problems. I can't wait. I can't wait. Woo, the word gives me life. Yes. That stuck with me oh, that was good. all week long. I tell you what, you know, I am super excited too because we have so many people who are going to be worshiping with us today yeah. from all over the globe. Yeah. Starting with the United States, yes, we got people. We got people from Florida, Indiana, North Carolina, Texas, Illinois, California, and my home state, Ooh, North Carolina. North Carolina, family. <laughs> we, we also have Panama, Kenya, and Grenada. Mm. Did I say that right? Hi, family. Grenada. 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 Hi, hey, family. I'm tearing it. I'm tearing it. I'm tearing it up. I'm butchering it, but I'm so happy that you're with us. How about that? Love you so much. Listen, make sure you come back, okay? <laughs> Last week also was Education and Training it Day, was. which is super huge here at the First Baptist Church of Glen Arden International. We are really super passionate about Christian education. Yes. So to all of the people who are part of that department under the dynamic leadership, of the one and the only Elder Esther Gordon. We just love you all so much. And if you want more information on all of the different education and training opportunities we have here at FBCG, visit us online. Make sure you visit fbcglenarden.org to hear all about the incredible things that we've got going on here under that oh. department. It's so good. Ah, we have so much going on. So much great things going on. Yes, so I love it so much. So <laughs> give us one thing that you are looking forward to today. What's one thing you're looking forward to on this glorious Sunday? Because the weather's going to be real nice over here in the DMV. Oh, it is going to be nice. I it's mean, aside nice. from the great weather, I think today <laughs> I'm just looking forward to hearing a good word from Pastor. Yeah. I know it's going to snatch me by the hairline there once again. Once I know again. it's coming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love it so much. I can't wait to get into this praise and worship. That's Same. what I need. I can't wait to get into it. So family, as always, make sure that you join us right back here at the end of service, we can talk about that dynamic word that we know we're going to get that's going to snatch all yes, the edges and scatter them across the fields <laughs> here at the DMV. We can't wait. <laughs> but while you get your word and I get my praise and worship, it's going to be a great time in the Holy Ghost. So, family, again, make sure you tell us where you're tuning in from. Share this link with anyone you know needs Jesus. And we'll see you right back after service. Have a good one.
grace and peace to you all. Has God been good to you this week? You made it another day, so we got a reason to give God praise and give God all glory, no matter what's happening. Come on, let's clap our hands. Come on, everybody clap your hands with us. Here we go. Let everything. Let
quiet. My God is alive. How could I keep it inside? Mm, I won't keep quiet. My God is alive. So how could I keep it inside? I won't let a rock cry out for me. I won't let a rock cry out for me. Help me sing, come on. I won't. testimony. Are you going to let a rock cry out for you? Hallelujah. I will not let a rock <laughs> cry out for me. Hallelujah. And the reason that we shouldn't let a rock 
cry out for you or me, it's because I got a reason. Does anybody have a reason to praise God? Do you have at least one reason to give God the praise? Won't you take a second and give God some hallelujah praise? Yeah, hallelujah. Glory to God. He's worthy, church. <laughs> He's worthy to be praised. And we give him the glory. I got a reason to praise him. Standing here, I got a reason. I don't know about you, <laughs> but I got a reason. If you think about what the Lord has already done for you, then I believe you got a reason to give God some praise. Come on one more time. Let's give God some hallelujah praise. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. My name is Reverend Annie Darden, and I am so delighted to be able to serve you this morning. You may take your seats. We greet those in the virtual land this morning. We thank you for joining us. Please let us know what city, county, or, con or country that you are joining us or worshiping with us. Amen. To God be the glory. Can we say to God be the glory? One more time. Because he's worthy. Amen and amen. Well, turn with me in your Bibles, your whatever electronic device that you have. Turn with me to the book, to Psalm 103. Psalm 103. I'm so happy in Jesus. Woo. We're going to start with verse 1 through 5. And it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Amen to, for the word of God. Thank you, Jesus. Won't you bow your heads with me in prayer? Oh, Heavenly Father, our Lord and our Savior, the creator of all mankind, we come to you today to glorify you and to honor you today. Why? Because we have a reason to praise you. God, we thank you because you are still God in all of our circumstances. We thank you. We ask now that you would speak God to us. Speak and give us through your Holy Spirit. Give us direction, Lord. Sometimes we just don't know where to turn. But God, we thank you for your guidance. We thank you for your direction. God, your word said, if it had not been, hallelujah, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, I know, God, we would not be here today. So, Father, through this service, we ask now that you would heal the brokenhearted, oh God. We pray that you would deliver the captives. And those, oh God, that are spiritually blinded, give them sight. And then, oh God, we just speak to those who have been bruised and abused and misused. I'm asking through this service, set them free, God. Set them free, Lord God. Don't let none of us go back home the same way we came. We're looking for a miracle. Somebody walked into this sanctuary saying, Lord, I need a miracle. And God, I pray right now through the word of God, send them a miracle. We ask this prayer in the name of your son, Jesus the Christ. And if anyone agrees with it, let's give God a hallelujah praise. Amen. 
thank you, Lord. Anybody looking for a miracle? I'm looking for a miracle. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Now it's time to welcome our guests. On behalf of our pastor, senior pastor, Pastor John K. Jenkins, Sr., our elders, our leaders, and members of the First Baptist Church of Glen Arden International, where we are developing dynamic disciples through discipleship discipline and duplication. If this is your first time uh, as our first time guest here at First Baptist, we ask that you I'd like to know more about our ministry. There's a QR code that would be coming up. Would you take a screenshot or either go to our website, First Baptist Church of Glen Arden.org, in slash info. Then scroll down to first time guests. Fill out the connection card. And when you do that, for those that are first timers inside of the sanctuary, take it to our members service department and you will receive a first time member uh, gift. For those online, make sure you put your mailing address uh, as you fill out the connection card. And so we can mail a first time gift to you. Again, First-timers, if you are online, we pray that you will put a number one in the chat so that our chat host may greet you. And for those that are first time in the sanctuary, I'm going to ask you to stand at this time. Won't you stand all over the sanctuary? I know there's sun coming in, but kind of wave your hand so we'll know who you are. Amen. We want you to remain standing because our members are going to love on you as we love on one another. Amen? Amen. news for this week. This is FBCG News. Here's what's going on on our church calendar. Take advantage of the opportunity to make your voice count in shaping the future of our country. We are excited to announce that today is FBCG Register to Vote Day. If you're a Maryland resident, age 16 or older, we encourage you to visit the tables in the Northex and get registered today. And if you live in another state, don't worry. Visit vote411.org and join us in getting registered. Let's support Pastor Jenkins as he speaks at New Psalmist Baptist Church for the pre-installation service of Pastor Walter Thomas Jr. as he succeeds his father, Walter Thomas Sr. Meet us at 6020 Marion Drive in Baltimore, Maryland today at 4 p.m. The second annual Veterans Claim Clinic is Friday, April 25th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Ministry Center. 
Veterans, here's your opportunity to obtain information on veterans compensation and file your veterans compensation claims. Attendees can interface with VA claims examiners to file claims on the spot. Space for one-on-one -on -one claim sessions is limited. First come, first serve. To register for the event, go to fbcglenarden.org slash VA Claims Clinic. The FBCG Prison Ministry proudly presents the Second Chance Resource Fair, Saturday, April 27th, 2024, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Attendees will have an opportunity to participate in a re-entry simulation that will show the struggles and challenges faced by individuals who are transitioning from incarceration into society and have access to a wealth of resources from state, local, and community-based service providers. With an on-site job fair, interview opportunities, and legal experts, the fair aims to bring awareness to the general community and empower returning citizens with tools they need to be successful. To register, visit FBC Glen Arden.org slash second chance. Minister Andre here, and I have some exciting news. The Unashamed Youth Retreat is back. That's right, May 3rd through the 5th. We're taking our students away for an amazing weekend at North Bay, and we believe that they're gonna leave a different way than they came. That's why our theme this year is everything new. And I'm so excited for what God is gonna do for our students. So we're calling all students, all parents, all volunteers. Register today. Male volunteers, we need your help to disciple our young men. Female volunteers, we need your help to disciple our young ladies because we believe that we're taking discipleship to the next level this year. So listen, register today at fbcglenarden.org slash youth retreat. And I'll see you there. Experience a weekend of revival and renewal at Grace Girls Getaway 2024. While on-site registration is full, you can still join us through day rate registration or virtually from anywhere in the world. May 22nd to the 24th will be an unforgettable experience of spiritual growth and rejuvenation, featuring inspiring sessions led by evangelist Timini Figueroa Cooper and Brenda Palmer and worship by Naya Cotton. Grace Girls Getaway promises to revive your spirit and ignite your faith. Secure your ticket today at fbcglenarden.org slash ggg. That's the news for this week. You can find more details about these events and others on our church website at fbcglenarden.org. Amen for our announcements. Well, FBCG family, it is now time for our tithes and offering. Amen. Amen. Yes, we should be excited because of your generous and awesome uh, giving, we are able to have online presence in over 40 nations, in over 40 states. Come on, let's give God some glory. Amen, amen. Membership all over. Remember four years ago, we didn't have that, but look at God. <laughs> let's give God some praise. Well, for your, on, for your giving, you have several ways that you can give. You can give online at, in, uh, on our website, fbc, fbcglenarden.org slash give. Or you can put cash or check in our envelope that you can find located in the seat back pocket in front of you. Then you can also mail it to the Ministry Center, 3600 Bright Seat Road, Landover, Maryland, 20785. Amen. So we praise God for your giving. Won't you bow your head? Father, we are so grateful. Thank you, God, for every penny, every dollar, because we know once you breathe on it, they're going to multiply. And so God let us be able to use these gifts for the upbuilding of your kingdom here on earth. For this house, the First Baptist Church of Glen Arden International, the assignment that you have on this house, let us be able, oh God, to continue to carry out that assignment. And we thank you, Father, for every giver in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.
Attended my way when sorrows like sea, billows roll. What
Amen, amen. Amen. Is it well? Is it well with your soul today? Hallelujah. Thank you, male chorus. I believe it's well with my soul. Let us stand. Those who are few that are not standing, and let's receive our senior pastor, Pastor John K. Jenkins Sr. Hallelujah. Good morning. Praise our God. Let's give the Lord praise for our male chorus. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege to gather together this morning and worship you. Thank you for every person present, those in the building, but also those who are viewing us around the country and around the world. We pray that you would anoint us to be your conduit, your mouthpiece, your instrument. Pray, Father, that hearts would be receptive to your truth and that your name gets all of the glory and all of the honor. I'm praying for unsaved, backslidden, unsure, uncommitted, unchurched persons. Pray that the saints would be edified and strengthened and that when it's all said and done, you get all of the glory and all of the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Look at your neighbor, tell him, I'm glad you made it to church today. You can be seated.
Anybody other than me glad you're still here? Man, I wish I could sing. Disappointments, I had my share of disappointment. But I'm still here. <laughs> Heartaches, I had my share of heartache. But I'm still here. I better let it go, I better let it along right there, I better stop. <laughs> All right. I want to talk to you today about unanswered prayer. I'll talk to you about why God might not be answering your prayers. Because I know, maybe not you, but somebody on your row been praying about something for years and God still ain't answered it. Look up and down your row and see who it might be. Don't point to him. Just, just make a note to yourself. Um... And I, I, I taught about this so, so many times, um, and there's a lot of reasons. The Bible gives us specific reasons, and I, I, don't, I don't have time to do all of the reasons why God doesn't answer your prayer. It might be that what you're asking him is outside of his will. I don't care how much you ask him, he ain't gonna help you hit the lotto. I don't care how many times you ask him for the numbers to play. He's not gonna tell you. I don't care how much you ask God for somebody else's husband, that ain't gonna happen from God. But there are, this is some other so many reasons. I mean, if you ask God something outside of his will, he's not going to do it. You can't bend God's arm and make him do something that is outside of his will. Somebody say that might be a reason. That might be a reason. He, he might not answer your prayer because your motives are not right. James says you pray and ask amiss. The Bible so uses the word amiss, and it means that you got selfish reasons for asking. It's not for his glory. That's a reason. That's, it might be because you got marital issues, problems. Um, First Peter 3 says, husbands, dwell with your wife according to understanding. Try to understand her. I know it's tough, but try to understand her. Come on, guys, don't leave me hanging out here by myself. So, y'all, y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all sitting up and act like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. But it says there, dwell with her according to knowledge and understanding so that your prayers are not hindered. I don't want my prayers hindered. I want God to answer my prayer. Look at your neighbor and say, amen, pastor. Say, that's true. So, I mean, those are, those are some, of the re some of the reasons. But I want to focus in on four reasons that are listed in I. Isaiah chapter 59. Isaiah 59. I want you to turn to Isaiah 59. And I want, to, I want you to ex examine yourself, your life, and just find out if you might be guilty of some of these things that Isaiah 59 
shares regarding why God might not be answering your prayer. Now, let me give you a little bit of background about Isaiah. Isaiah has been given the task and the responsibility of preaching and prophesying to, the, to Israel at a time when the nation of Israel is divided. You know, they got 12 tribes and there's, a, there's a seasons and times of the history of Israel when, the, when they're divided. And um, Judah, it is Judah, it is the tribe of Judah that he has been given the assignment of preaching and prophesying to that tribe. Now, the way Isaiah is structured, the first half of Isaiah, God's rebuking them, Judah, for their sin. He's, he's, he's rebuking them for their sin because they, they, they've been disobedient to God. The, and the second half of Isaiah is God giving them hope that in spite of their sin, that God is a God that will give them another chance. Thank the five of y'all for that rousing affirmation. I, I, I'm thinking that there's some people here who are glad that God is a God that will give you another chance. And that, that's great news. That's something to shout about, that God will give you another chance to get it right, another opportunity to straighten it out. And, and, and that's what the second half of Isaiah is about. It deals with speaking to Judah to tell them God's going to give you the opportunity. And there's some of you here today, God should have killed your butt a long time ago. He should have took you straight on out. But he gave you another chance. Can I get an amen right there? I just need an amen. Yeah, I'm, I'm grateful that he's a God. I stopped seeing a second chance. I just keep thanking him for another chance. But here's what he says to them, Isaiah 59. This, and I just want y'all to walk with me down through several verses. Can y'all do that? I'm just gonna walk down. Now, let me tell y'all right off the bat, y'all you know, not gonna like some of the stuff I'm getting ready to say. Ain't nobody gonna come up here. I'm telling you, I already know. Ain't nobody gonna put no money up here for this message. Ain't nobody gonna shout. Ain't nobody gonna run around. Ain't gonna be none of that today. Sometimes, as a pastor, a good pastor, I gotta give you some castor oil. Yeah, this is, uh, but it's good for you. It may not taste good, but it's gonna be good for you. Isaiah 59, behold, I'm going to start at verse 1. The Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. Stop right there. Let me just stop right there and make, the, make it plain that we serve a God who has the capacity and the ability to save and deliver. If it's not done, if your prayer is not answered, if he's not bringing you deliverance, if he's not doing what you want him to do, it's not because he's not able. And that's what Isaiah 59 one says. Behold, the Lord's hand is not short that it cannot save, nor his ear heavy that it cannot hear. It's not that he, his ear is stopped up with wax. I couldn't hear out of one of my ears this last, for it's been a few weeks really. And I finally was inside CBS the other day and saw a whole row devoted to helping you hear medications. When they, devote, when they devote a whole row to something, that means a lot of people got that issue. And I, I, I said I was going to go to the doctor and get the doctor to tell me what might be wrong. But I bought some stuff. I said, let me try this stuff out. And I, you know, you, you squirt it in your ear and let it sit in there for a few minutes and you get a little syringe and you suck the liquids out. And I did it and shoo, bam, I can hear my left ear now. Praise him. Praise the Lord. And the text is telling us God's issue is not that his ear cannot hear. It's not that he doesn't have a capacity. Matter of fact, he hears you, but perhaps he, he has chosen not to respond to your prayer request. So it's not that he cannot hear. 
But then he says this in verse number two. Are y'all with me? Your iniquities have separated you from your God. And your sins have hidden his face from you. It's your behavior. It's your attitude. It's your choice, choices. It's your, your iniquities and your sins. Somebody say, your iniquities and your sins have separated you from God, has blocked his face from you. His, your sins and your iniquities have separated you from your fellowship with God and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. That's, that's, that is the deal. It's what you're doing. Go ahead, look at your neighbor and say, because you're nasty. Tell him you're nasty. I'm just letting it sink in to y'all for a minute. I love having the kind of life with God that when you talk to him, he answers. I love, I love having the kind of relationship and serving the kind of God. Here's the kind of God we serve. I think I, I might have said this last week. I can't remember what I said, but I love serving the kind of God that sometimes God answers my prayer even before I ask him. Anybody here ever seen God open up a door, something you wanted, and he already has solved it and answered and spoke to it and changed the situation, and you ain't even said nothing to him or any else, anybody else about it. But yet, he, that's the kind of God we serve. He can fix it before you even ask him to. Oh, I think that's ph phenomenal. It's amazing. So then he begins to tell us what, what, the, spe the specificity, go ahead, is that a word? I made it up. If it ain't a word, I made it up. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a John Jenkins word. I just, uh, is that a word, specificity? Okay, so I can't claim it as a John Jenkins word. Let me think of another word I can just make up. It's, it's, he gives us the specifics. Now, this is not all of the things that are caused God not to hear you, but it just gives us four, and I'm going to give them to you real quick. Here's, here they are right here. He says, number one is in number three. He says, in verse three, he says, here's the first one. For your hands have defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Here's what this is referring to because in some other verses it, it even specifies it more. It says innocent blood and what it boils down to is taking the life of an innocent person. And I know you're saying that you haven't done that, but in our community, in our culture, we've done it oftentimes. And in our country, we've done it to the tunes of a million times a year when we abort our babies. I knew y'all weren't going to say amen. That's why I told you ain't nobody going to. And it's okay. It's all right. I'm not, I'm not in this thing. I'm not here. Let me be clear. Let me be clear. I'm not in this thing for y'all's amen, your approval, your uh, anything. I'm just trying to give you the truth of what God's attitude and heart is. But abortion has become such a, people think they have a right to. Y'all notice we think we have a right to it. But the heart of God is that the, whole, the only way that the, the seed and the, the, the baby could even be conceived is if God allowed it to happen. Do y'all know there's a bunch of people here today in the, in the, there's a bunch of people who want to have children and can't have children. They trying to get a baby. They trying to get pregnant. They doing it and doing it and doing it and ain't nothing be getting done. I don't have to be no more specific than that, right? Y'all know what I'm saying? Because if I need to go down a little lower, I can go a little lower. Because y'all acting like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. But the heart of God is bleeding to the tune of one million babies a year that we're born. And let me be clear, this is, I am not talking to you about, this is not a political message. This is, abortion is not a political issue, it's a moral issue. It's a moral issue. 
and, and, and by the way, I'm not talking about this because I'm, I'm trying to push you to vote for anybody or take a political stand. No, no. You, here's what I'm talking about. I'm not even trying to change the laws in this country. What I'm trying to do is change you. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to, I'm trying to change your decisions of what you choose to do when you get pregnant. I'm trying to stop you from using abortion as a birth control method. Now, I've been to, I've been to pastor of this church for 35 years. Come on. Can I talk about you for a minute? Can I tell them your story? Are you sure? You sure? This is one of our faithful members who got pregnant and the doctors told her her child was going to be deformed and they urged her to have an abortion years ago, years ago. But her and her husband, thank God, I love them for them for this, they decided that they were not going to abort that baby. The doctors tried to pressure her to do it, but I, I'm so proud that they said, we will just carry the baby, and the baby was born, and the baby didn't, didn't survive, didn't last, but they gave the baby a chance. Last week, she, they, had a, they, had a, they did it again and had another child. And last week, she bought her, how old is 25? 15? Big old boy, looked like a football player. He came here 15 years old. And the truth, and the truth of the matter is, uh, Many women in our church have decided here in our church take a stand on this not to abort babies and many mothers have come up and said here's the baby that I was going to abort but I heard you preach about abortion and here, here that child is. One lady came up to me, one lady came up to me this morning after the 8 o'clock service and said 30 years ago, Pastor, I got pregnant and my family wanted me to abort the baby, but I chose not to abort the baby. And that, that baby now got babies and I got a two-year-old grandbaby that is the love of our life, the love of our family, this two-year-old grandchild that wouldn't even be here had I aborted the child 30 years ago. Are y'all listening to me? I think it's strange that everybody who's for abortion is already here. Let me just let that sink in for a minute. And, and, and the scripture says, God says, I, I, I can't hear you because I can't respond to you because your hands are defiled with blood. There are, there, are, there are people in this country who use birth control as a, a, abortion has a form of birth control. They just get pregnant, they just go out and get the pill. Take the pill, they might be pregnant and they abort the child. God says your, 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 def, your hands are defiled. They make it so easy now, just go down to the Drugstore and get the pill, the morning after pill, they call it. In case you, you do, in case the sperm hooks up with the egg and you are pregnant, it will abort the child. Now, you're not going to hear this message any place very often. Churches, pastors don't even preach this. 
But this is one pastor who's willing to be faithful to the teaching of the Bible. You don't have to like me. You don't have to come back. I, I'm not, this is not anything I'm going to ever change. I'm not going to ever stop preaching this. I'm never going to stop. So he says, this is a problem. Your hands are defiled and your fingers with iniquity because you've defiled blood. You've killed babies. Well, hold up. He doesn't, he doesn't stop there. He goes on. Let me roll on. Let me roll on to this. He says, uh, uh, verse 3, and he says, your lips have spoken lies and your tongue has muttered perversity. Here's, here's the second problem why God can't respond to your your, your prayers because you got lying lips. You're a liar. How many of y'all have ever, how many of y'all have ever told a lie? Oh, oh my God. <laughs> we might need to call this the Lion Baptist Church. We have to learn to tell the truth even if it means to our hurt. <laughs> tell the truth. Lying lips. Your, your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue has muttered perversity. God's warning us to be stray away from not telling the truth. Our world lacks truth truth tellers um, let me let me put verse 3 and verse 4 together because these are they, 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 they match up but I have them listed separately so I'm going to switch up uh, uh, production so verse Three talks about lying lips in verse four. Look at verse four. It says, uh, the latter part of the middle of verse four says, nor does any plead for truth. So, so one is, is lying, li telling lies. The other is a failure to speak truth. No, you know what? No, slow, slow down. No. Let me just stick with what I've got because I, I act like I didn't say anything that I just said. Let me stick with my plan. Let me just stick with this because I'm about to mess everything up right here. I'm trying to be slick. Here's number three. They understand what it means to tell lies. They understand. Y'all know that, right? Look at the person next to you. Tell them you look beautiful. See, some of y'all just lied. Don't tell a lie even if the pastor tell you to tell a lie. <laughs> Don't let nobody influence you to tell a lie if it ain't true. Because, you know, children, young children are truth tellers. They haven't learned to lie. They, they learn to lie eventually. They learn to tell lies because they watch their parents lie. But they, they, my wife was showing me a, a, a video uh, that she watches reels. She's a real watcher, this, this one right here. She does reels. And so she was showing me, honey, watch this. Look at this right here. Look at this kid up in the lap of his mother. They're talking. Then the kid, the boy says to his mother, Mama, your breath stinks. <laughs> what have you eaten today? <laughs> A little kid. They truth tell us. They're honest. They're, they haven't learned to be slick. 
we laughed. My wife and I, we laughed to holler that it, that this little boy told his mother his, that her breath stank. Here's number three. Verse four says, no one calls for justice. And that's point four, a failure to call for justice. And this is a significant thing because our country is flooding with injustice. Uh, injustice legal system, unjust criminal justice system, unjust police officers. We can go on and on and on with areas of injustice. And, the, and, and this warning is you see it, but you don't say nothing about it. Now let me spend a few moments on this in the, the, few, the few remaining moments that I have. I had the privilege this week of uh, traveling to Montgomery, Alabama. And while I was in Montgomery, Alabama, I was there with a group of ministers and pastors from around the country. And we visited what's called the Legacy Museum. If you're ever in Montgomery, Alabama, you should go by to see this Legacy Museum. The Legacy Museum is the African American Museum in DC on steroids. It's, it takes, the only, the only difference is the African American Museum in Washington DC highlights successes of African Americans. The Legacy Museum in Montgomery, Alabama focuses on the injustices that have been done to African American people over time. And that's all it talks about, of how people got mistreated, how, how the, the predominant culture penalized and killed and lynched and rejected people of color. It was heart moving to me. I had to, going through it, I had to take my handkerchief out because I, I started crying. How they treated our children how they treated our four parents and their children. And I thought to myself, what if that was one of my kids? Behind bars, soul ripped away, families torn apart and ripped away. And what I'm having trouble with you all in our country is a segment of our country don't want to learn about what happened in this country's past. And I, I stumbled across this verse. Uh, and it, 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 it's amazing how God works because I wasn't looking to preach from Isaiah 59. I wasn't looking, to, matter of fact, uh, I just came across preaching from this passage here just um, not even planning or talking about it, but it fit with the fact that this week I went to the Legacy Museum and saw an injustice. And, and my assignment to you is some of you see injustices and you don't want to say anything about it. You see somebody not treat, being treated right and you remain quiet. As a child of God, when you see something that's not right, you ought to say something. Yeah. Tell your neighbor to say something. say something. Tell them on the other side, you ought to say something. Don't keep quiet. Don't, don't, don't ignore it. Don't act like it's not occurring. Don't act like it's not real. Say something. And the scripture says, God, this is what the scripture says, the, God has turned his face from you. He hasn't heard your prayers because here you saw injustice and you refused to speak about it. You, you don't call for justice. 
Let me close. I got three minutes. It says in verse 4, nor does any plead for truth, a failure to speak truth. And that's my fourth and final point, is that we got churches and religious leaders who have become afraid to speak truth. We got political leaders political leaders who refuse to speak truth. We have a, a huge part of our culture who embrace, what's the word they use? Um, what do they call it? Um, no, 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 there's, there's a word for when you, 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 you believe fallacies. Um, man. Conspiracy theories. Who is that you? You're anointed. <laughs> Thank you. It's, it's, it's conspiracy theories. Why spread? And people embrace and accepted it like it's truth. I'm trying to figure out how, how people going to say that January 6th was not an insurrection to save my life. They try to make us believe that they was just down there walking the streets, sightseeing. Y'all better be glad that my time is up because I feel something rising up inside of me right now. Something is rising up inside of me. We watched the President of the United States stand up there and say what he said. Now he's trying to tell us he didn't do it. Oh, God, please keep me from cussing right now in Jesus' name. Let me do it for you. Yeah, go on down there. I'm going to be with you, he said. I'll be with you. You got to do it by force. Did y'all hear him say that? Now he trying to tell us that's not what he, Lord have mercy. Let me, let me, let me just, let me, let me finish. Let me just. I'm quit. I'm going, I'm going to quit because I feel something rising up inside of me. I'm about to go too far. I'm about to say something I'm going to later regret <laughs> they don't want to tell the truth a failure to speak truth whatever you do be willing to tell the truth I'm done we serve a Jesus who is the truth he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And the truth is, no man can get to the Father except through me. That's what he said. And my question is, do you know the Lord Jesus? Have you accepted the Lord Jesus? Are you his child? 
I want to invite you to accept the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior right now. If you're not saved, come get saved. If you have backslid, you've accepted the Lord, but you backslid, you want to rededicate yourself, now is the time to come. If you are unsure of your eternal status, come on, we can help you get assurance right now. Or maybe you're already saved, but you want to join First Baptist right now is the time to come. Yes, let me talk about this young lady right here. Let me tell y'all something about her. Step, face me, turn around, turn around the other way. This way, yeah, there you go. All the way, no, 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 turn this way right this here, way? face me. Oh, uh, okay, okay. <laughs> she don't know what to do because she ain't never been in the church before. This is her first time in the church. And, and you know why I know that? I know that because she came here at the end of the first service today and in between service, she came down and talked to me. She says, I, I used to be a Muslim, but I'm a Christian now. And you know what she said? I've never been here, but I've been fed by this church and I want to join this church. So proud. Anybody else? Come right now, right now, right now. Come right now, right this moment, right this instant. Don't delay it. Don't put it off. Don't be ashamed. Come. Unsaved, backslidden, unsure. You need a church home. Come right now. Come right now. Do. How you doing, buddy? God bless you. Stay. Look at the person next to you. Talk to them. So are you saved? Are you walking with God? Do you have a church home? Ask them. Wait for an answer. Say, if, you, if you're not right with God, if you're not in the right place, I'll walk down there with you. You don't have to walk by yourself, but I'll walk with you. Please don't let the devil keep you in your seat when the God of the universe is calling you to come forward. Come right now while the blood is running warm in your veins. Don't wait till you can get it straight. Don't wait till you can get something fixed. No, you can't fix it. How you doing? I'm so proud of you. Anybody else? Amen. Help me thank the Lord for these who come. The person behind you is a counselor. They're going to take you to a room, sit down and minister, talk to you and minister to you. Father, I thank you for these who've come. I pray that you, by the power of your grace, power of your spirit, plant them in your vineyard, use them for your glory. In Jesus' name, I pray in the name of the Lord that you give them faith towards you, a heart of repentance, and let the Holy Spirit fill their very hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Excellent. Praise the Lord. Can I, can I wait one more minute? Somebody else is supposed to be down here right now. And let me just wait one more minute. I just, this, let me just wait. Come on. Come on, my brother. Come on, my sister. Come now while you have the opportunity to say yes to the Lord. Do not put it off. That devil will try to hold you back and tell you to wait on this and wait on that. But the devil is a liar. And the truth is not in him. 
Jesus loves you. He spared your life for such a time as this. Anybody else? Anybody else? Come right now. All right. That devil tried to keep you in your seat. So proud of you. Father, thank you for this precious young lady. Pray that you manifest yourself to her. Fill her with your spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, God bless you. Have a great day. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you and to lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. What an incredible word. What a phenomenal service. Thank you so much, Pastor, for that timely message. But family, listen, there is still time. Whether you may be in a backslidden posture, I'm jacking it up, backslidden posture, maybe you are unchurched, unsure, unsaved. Listen, click that button, make that phone call. There is still time. Someone from our incredible church is dying to connect with you. So please do not let this time pass by. If you felt something in this service, something weighing on your heart, something heavy on your mind, don't miss this moment. Definitely make that call, click that button. Someone on our team is waiting to connect with you. I'm still destroyed. <laughs> I told you this was going to happen. This is so good. <laughs> that was such a great message and family as always. Please drop in the chat and tell us one of your takeaways or maybe two or four, 12 of your takeaways. Now don't take over the chat now. Let our other, our other virtual family members put their notes in there. But that was so good. Unanswered prayers. What is something that popped out for you that was just like, because I'm still like, good Lord, that was good. It was so much, but I think one of the main things that I was really like thrown off by was the lying lips. Mm. And you know, because I think a lot of times it's easy for us to say, well, I don't lie. I don't do that. But mm. really, we all are guilty of that in yeah. some way or the other. And I thought it was such a good example of us being reminded that we need to stay in God's face. Yeah. Staying in before him and making sure that we're in good standing with him. That's because good. you never know. You never know. You yeah. never know. I think one of mine that popped out was actually at the top of the service, the the early part of that chapter, that God is able. Mm -hmm. That it's not like when your prayers aren't answered that he can't answer them mm -hmm. or that he isn't hearing yes. your prayer. I love that top of that chapter mm -hmm. in Isaiah 59 that clearly states that he's able, but there's things that we prevent getting our prayers mm -hmm. answered from God. I thought that was so good. And family, again, please drop in the chat some of your takeaways. Another one that popped out um, at me was um, just the importance of knowing how your sins have consequences that you can't see. Because I think sometimes we will drop a ball and we'll sin and we'll do things and our consequence literally is just the scope of what we can see or what we can think. Mm -hmm. But oh my gosh, there's consequences to that. And I love how Pastor dug into it and just freely spoke from the heart about the different things that can keep our prayers being unanswered. But I just, I, that jumped out at me early in the service of that there are consequences of our sins. And a lot of them are things that we can't even see. See, a lot Ooh. of times we do that though. We assume, well, okay, well, I don't see the problem here. Mm -hmm. Well, I skirted around yeah. the consequence, then yeah. I'm okay. And it's like, surprise. Maybe not, because it can really hinder yeah. our relationship with God and how we're and how we go to Him and how He answers our prayers. It can hinder that. So that's something to really think about. Oh, that was so so good. Mm -hmm. I, that was so so good. I loved it. Well, <laughs> listen, we've got a um, couple announcements for the week. You wanna 
take them? You want to jump in there? What you sure. want to do? Well, I'll, I'll do the first one because that's your alley, the second one. That's oh. your lane. I don't want to jack that up. So listen, family, you know we've got Bible study <laughs> back this Tuesday at 7 p.m. And Pastor is still in this incredible series in the Book of Romans that he's doing. So definitely make sure that you tune in for Bible study. And the cool thing is, is that if you've missed some of the previous Bible studies, you're able to watch them online and get caught up with us. So that's one big major announcement for the week that Bible study is still Today, April 21st, the online campus will be hosting its, op its volunteer open house. Yes. This is a great opportunity that if you're a member th through the online campus, uh, this is the opportunity for you to join in and, and volunteer and serve yeah. with, your, with your other FBCG members. That's so amazing. this is a really great opportunity. It's going to be at 4 o'clock, so make sure you don't miss it. Um, and you can register for that uh, for, at fbcglenarden.org backslash OC Open House. I love that. And that's 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's, yes, that's our, correct. our 4 p.m. Mm -hmm. So listen, if you in Europe, it ain't your 4 p.m. If it's Cali, it's not your 4 p.m. It's Eastern Standard, yes. 4 p.m. But that's pretty, mm -hmm. pretty amazing mm -hmm. in itself that no matter where you are tuning in from, no matter where you are, a member from of our church, mm -hmm. you still are able to serve with us. Yes. I love it. Well, that's <laughs> it, family. We love you so much. Have an amazing day and a great week on purpose. And we'll see you next week. Have a good one. Yeah.